Wow. I really just did like a whole two minute spill and wasn't even recording. For real? For real? All right, guys, this is Al B, and I'm back with another video. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to use your knobs or your faders to control almost anything in FL Studio. Now, this will work with FL Studio itself and with any third party plugins that you have loaded in FL Studio. Anything that you can control with your mouse, anything you can tweak in those plugins, you're going to be able to tweak with your knobs and or with your faders if your controller has them. Today, I'm using the Akai MPK Mini MK3, one of my personal favorites out of the mini series of controllers. But this will work with Innovation Launch Key Series controllers. This will also work with Arturia Series Mini controllers. It will work um, for pretty much any controller that you have, the method I'm gonna show you today. So without further ado guys, this is Al B. Let's get into it. Yes sir. Today I'm going to be using the Akai MPK Mini MK3, um, but this will work for pretty much any controller, whether that's your Innovation Launch Key controllers or your Arturia Key controllers. If you want to see my full workflow for using the Mini MK3, as well as for using these other controls that I just named, I have templates where you can do loop recording with those, where you can play and pause and stop, where you can jump between channels all from the controllers themselves without having to touch FL Studio. So if you do loop recording um, and you want to know how to set that up with those controllers, I will leave a link in the description to those videos, okay? And the method that I use with those controllers does not use the FPC. Um, those templates that I have set up for you will have the drum channels and the sample chops or whatever you have going directly into their own channels in FL Studio, which will make it a breeze when it's time to arrange or when it's time to mix your tracks. OK, so again, if you're interested in that workflow for loop recording, for mixing um, straight into your mixer channels, then go ahead and check the link in the description for that. But today I'm just going to be showing you how to use your knobs and fade to control VSTs and effects plugins in FL Studio. So today for the first example, I'm going to use Arcade plugin by output, and I'm going to use it to control the delay. I want to use knob one on my controller to control the delay. So what you do is you go over to your browser on the left hand side, you go to current project, you go down to generators in this case, because it's a VST, go to generators, and I want to control something inside of Arcade. So let me open up the Arcade folder. Now I come back to Arcade and I move the delay knob or the delay parameter and boom, the browser jumps down to MIDI CC number 40. So this is what's tied to the delay. Right click it, link to controller and simply, if you look, auto detect is enabled by default so you don't have to touch anything now you just turn knob one on your controller and it will link to the delay parameter. So now I can control the delay from knob one. So if I'm playing my track and I want to change it. I can do that right from the controller. It's just that easy. When it comes to effects plugins, it's pretty much the same thing. So I'll use the arcade channel and I'll use the RC20 effect plugin. So let me pull that up. And let's say I want to use knob two on my controller to play with the space parameter inside of RC20. So let me first of all, go back to current project on the browser. And now because it's a mixer effect, I'm going to come under effects. And I want to look for the RC20 plugin that's on my arcade channel. It's not this one because this one says master channel. I want RC20 on my arcade channel. Open it up, come to the come to the effect plugin, move it some. Sometimes it bugs out and it doesn't show you in the browser when you first move it. And so you got to play with another one and then come back to it. And boom, it shows me that space amount is the parameter that I want to tie my knob to to. I want to tie knob to to this parameter. In this case, I actually have them named nicely, but you will find a lot of VSTs do not name them. But um, RC20 did a good job here naming it space. Right click on it, link to controller. 
and I want to use knob two to control that space effect. So boom, knob two, it learned automatically because auto detect was on and bow, I can control space. So if I'm playing my track and I, even if I want to record, you know, automation, I can do it like this. There you have it, guys. That's how you can use your knobs to control almost anything inside of FL Studio um, for any VST or any effect. And the same thing goes for the native controls inside of FL Studio. Like if I wanted to control the mix effect here on RC20, it's the same story. Right click, link to controller. Now I'm going to move knob three and I can control the mix level of that channel. You can do this for almost anything inside of FL Studio or inside of a third party VST. If you want to see the full workflow of using this controller, again, I have a full working MIDI template that allows you to use your drum pads to tap out your different channels where you can have a drum sound in each channel assigned to each pad or you can have sample chops assigned to your pad. So you can really use it like an MPC machine um, and have your MIDI data separate. This method does not use the FPC. If you're interested in that workflow for loop recording or just for laying out your drums, then please uh, check out the link in the description and I'll show you that video for the Mini MK3. I have a very similar template for the Launch Key Innovation keyboards, as well as for the Arturia mini lab so check the link in the description to see those different templates if you're interested in those workflows um but other than that guys i hope you found the video helpful like and subscribe this is al b until next time we are out yes sir